Semper Fidelis remains always faithful. It's the core of a promise that a Marine makes to their country. What they never told the Marine was that that promise only goes one way. Many young men and women have signed the blank check worth their lives to Uncle Sam with the promise to always be faithful and always be true in the defense of this nation, its people, and its principles. And many thousands of times the United States government has cashed those checks in full, relying on these young boys and girls being so willing to go into harm's way to do what needs to be done into the service of their nation. And through the years, we've seen ample evidence that the government disregards the service and trauma of these young veterans and casts them aside in its push for authoritarian hedge money. Since 2001, the United States has engaged in a new type of war, a constant war, a TV war, a war where the consequences are felt by our society rather than our government. With every tragedy broadcast on a 24-7 news cycle and the propaganda machine working full-time to celebrate the deeds of those brave young women deployed to fight the conflict chosen by the elite, the consequences and perils of this generational conflict have gone largely ignored by those in power to correct them. PTSD has become rampant and is largely left untreated and undiagnosed. Veterans make up one of the largest demographics of America's homeless population. The leading cause of death amongst post-9-11 veterans is suicide. The Department of Veterans Affairs has become politicized and wrapped up in one scandal after another, all while the availability and quality of medical and mental health care for our veterans has been reduced to the bare minimum. Many of you watching or listening have become passingly familiar with my own story and my own history. How in 2008, as a 19-year-old with no idea what I was doing in life, I also signed that check to Uncle Sam. Now, five years later, I participated in the military occupation and lockdown of the city of Boston during an unlawful and undeclared state of martial law. How later that year, a protester delivered me a message that was so compelling that in the midst of carrying out my orders, for the first time in my life, I began to question not just their legality, but also their morality and the righteousness of the mission and the consequences of partaking in the war that I had lost so many friends to. Over the past seven years, I've watched from the outside as the United States continued to fight a seemingly endless war. As young men and women survived the battlefield only to fall to depression and addiction at home. I found it too difficult to keep in touch with many of those I served with because of constantly having to watch from afar as they suffer and lost along the way. But now, in more recent times, we've seen a new threat to the principles of our great nation and a threat to the very autonomy of the individual to make personal medical decisions without the insistence of government force along the way. And as many of us could have predicted, as many of us saw coming with the writing on the wall, the first test subjects for these mandates, these unlawful orders, these dictates from on high, and these experimental medical treatments would be those men and women who believe so strongly in the values of this nation that they were willing to write that check to the government to defend them. Semper Fidelis, always faithful. An unmatched promise that goes down in history as being one of the most dangerous lies ever told. But then again, if the United States was known for keeping its promises, maybe we wouldn't need the military so much. <laughs>